nobody that is having a house pro property tax emergency at 3.30 in the morning. Let this guy get his sleep, okay? Rumble and growl on Oreo TV. issues from the local to the global perspective so that you can make better choices. Today we have a real treat because we are talking about homeowners. Are you a homeowner? I'm a homeowner and I want to know what this guy has to say. So who is this guy? Well this is Mike Franklin and he's the property tax guy. So let's welcome him to the show. Welcome to the show Mike. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. You're the property tax guy. So what, what does that mean? Explain it. Well um, I advocate for property owners and um, uh, homeowners, you know, specifically, uh, when they um, have a set of concerns about their assessments, uh, they can call me, and uh, anybody can call me at any time, and uh, and and uh, I can either uh, provide them a proposal to handle their assessment challenges, or uh, or if they want to handle it themselves, I'm happy to coach them through the whole process, uh, you know, at no cost. They can call me anytime, and I'll answer any questions. I'll tell them literally everything I I know about it, which is quite a bit after uh, I've been doing it for 13 years. I've participated in assessment matters in uh, it's either 36 or 37 counties so far. And I, I had I participated in hundreds of, um, of assessment hearings. I was a, I'm a former state hearing officer. So I was a, basically a small claims judge for assessments for six counties for four years. So I essentially know both sides of the game. I'm a real estate broker. Uh, and so I've got 25 years of experience of what properties list for, sell for, assess for, and appraise for. And so I'm, I believe I'm uniquely qualified to, to, uh, to help people with their uh, assessment matters. You sound like you really have your finger on the pulse of everything that's going on. You know, like you really have a big view. Yeah, I'm, wide, a, wide view. I'm a former computer consultant. Um, and, and so I'm very fluent in doing uh, research, um, you know, valuation research. And so um, a, a big element of it is, is, is getting the assessor's data so that you can compare apples and apples. So you have to FOIL Freedom of Information Law. You need to FOIL the records as we've quickly as possible. About, we've talked about FOIL before, so pay attention to what you're saying. You need to use this in your everyday life. That, that's right. And uh, basically all you need to do is write an email to the town clerk and tell them what it is that you want. And, um, and they have five days to respond, uh, five business days to respond to acknowledge your request, and then uh, 20 business days to fulfill it. They can, they can you know, get extensions or whatever, but, that's, that's, but they'd have to have some sort of justification. And so I have a lot of experience in, in FOIL matters, and a lot of these municipalities don't like to give up their data. So sometimes I, I have to uh, pursue them legally to force them to do it. I know in Baldwinsville assessments have been going up and up and you know taxes then go up because the assessment's higher. So I mean I'm sure that you're busy. <laughs> I'm sure you're busy. Yeah, yeah. There's there's just all kinds of issues. There's um, you know being an assessor is a, is a very difficult job. And, um, and so I, I don't criticize an assessor's uh, figures per se, um, but I, some, I have a lot of concerns is that I expect them to respond to taxpayers promptly, look into their concerns in good faith, and either make an adjustment or, um, or, or uh, slightly point them to their appeal options. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you're talking about a government that actually works for the people. Is that what you're saying? Um, well, I think that's kind of the problem. The reason that people need me is because it doesn't work that, it doesn't work that well. And I can give some very prime examples. For example, the city of Syracuse, um, you know, just refused to give me their data. Their deputy assessor told me, you will never get my data. And what he doesn't understand is, it's not his data, that data belongs to the people. So uh, the first thing I do when I get involved in the case is I foil their comparable sales report, their comparable assessment report, their, uh, their cost valuation report and their inventory summary. And there could be other things like land tables and things that I ask for, depending on the circumstance. And then you gotta get that rolling because, because the tentative rule comes out of May 1st. And the, and the Board of Assessment Review hearings are the fourth Tuesday of May. Um, and if you don't get anything uh, at that, then you file for SCAR. So, so hopefully you get the data in time to have an intelligent conversation at bar. But sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. If you don't, you should get it by law before the SCAR hearing. But, uh, but they like to evade you. They like to delay you. 
And so the city of Syracuse, they basically begged me to sue them last year, so I did. Oh, I, 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 sued, nice them, I sued them in state Supreme Court. And, um, and, and what's concerning to me is, is that they could have run these reports and given them to me in a matter of five minutes. Right. But instead, they want to have a protracted lawsuit that took a year. Expensive. And now, they, uh, it appears as though they want to appeal the decision of the judge and spend more money. And the city of Syracuse has 33 people in their, in their legal department, a $6 million budget. It kind of appears as though that can be cut back significantly. Just spend five minutes and run the report that I'm entitled to by law. And for example, my entire case was based on uh, 89.3a of the public officer's law that says, when an agency has the ability to retrieve or extract a record or data maintained in a computer storage system with reasonable effort, it shall be required to do so. And the, Period. And so, so you won this case. That's right. Oh, that's awesome. High five me. That's great. Um, Pro se, by the way. What's that mean? It means I didn't have a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a real estate broker. I represented myself. Because if I hired a lawyer, it cost me thousands of dollars. Right. So as it was, I used the New York State e-file program, the website, and I had to give them like 450 bucks and stay, uh, spend money on certain process service. We are talking about 650 bucks to get a, a report I should have had in five minutes. Right. And, um, but, and but you went up against the man and you won I, on your own, by yourself. I mean, that, yeah. that's to me and, why. And, 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 and if they want to appeal, I can't wait. I can't wait because <laughs> I want the experience at the appellate level. Oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, I love that attitude. So if I'm a homeowner and I'm watching this, what should I, you know, if I want your services, what should I do? Like if I even think... If I'm just curious of maybe, do I need your services? What do I do? Well, the objective is, uh, my objective is to just get it right. So, um, and like I said, the assessor has a difficult job. A lot of, half the people are high, half the people are low. Some of them are extremely high, some of them are extremely low. So, if, you know, if you have a concern, you know, you should really realistically look at, you know, can you sell it for what it's assessed for, number one. But number two, are there, you know, that's, that would be excessive. If you can't sell it for what they have it assessed for, that would be excessive. If, but if there's other properties that are good or better that are assessed for less, that would be unequal. And if you think either of those circumstances are, are occurring, you should give me a call. And I'm very fast at the legal research. I can tell you very quickly whether or not you have a case. And if you have a case... No um, lawyer will do that. They'll drag it out. Well, not only that, if I take on your case and I don't win, I don't pay you anything. But if I do win, then you, know, you pay me whatever it is. You know, we, I create custom agreements based on the circumstance. The price of the house, the tax rate in the town, so on and so forth. But if I don't win, you, you don't have to pay me anything. Uh, if it's scar, you have to pay the filing fee. It's like thirty dollars and a bunch of service costs, maybe forty bucks, a little bit seventy bucks to go to scar. Oh, that's not bad. Bar, you know, bar, bar is free, but but the board of assessor review uh, tends to be um, like the city of Syracuse, for example. I, I hate to beat up on them, but it's really bad. It's really bad in the city of Syracuse. The same chairman has been there for twenty years. And um, and and um, I, I keep only one of the evaluation experience out of the whole five panel. Uh, I, well, actually, they might have a new young guy that, that has has some, but you know very little. Um, and, uh, and you know basically they're not qualified to even know what I'm talking about. And it's it's all political cronyism, and it's not just in Syracuse. This happens all over the state. Like I said, I've done it in 36 or 37 counties. A lot of times, I don't even bother going to the bar because. It's just a bunch of crony nonsense, and it's just a waste of my time. I, I, I hate to say, but um, but it's refreshing, you know, when, when they actually, uh, you know, sometimes they don't know the law, or they don't know about valuation, or they ignore the law, and it, it, it happens quite frequently. But I, I um, but but there are ones that are good and actually listen and actually, you know, it just it just varies from town to town. Some of the real small towns are are you know the wild west. They're, so this, again, my friends, is why it's important to get involved in your local government, because they're taking the first bite out of you in the taxes, your property taxes. So get to know them and what's going on and how the process works. Um, how can they contact you? You've been saying call every time, and I just want to give you guys a caveat. There is nobody that is having a house pro property tax emergency at 3.30 in the morning. Let this guy get his sleep, okay? But how can they get in touch with you? Well, my website is thepropertytaxguy.com. My phone number is 315-876-2262. He's a brave man. Do not be calling him in the middle of the night. No, the thing is, you know, I, I, I work seven days a week. And to me, this is a this is a hobby. I'm kind of addicted to it. I love talking about this <laughs> stuff because it, because some of it is, is so wrong. My, the, the biggest reason I do this is, is that you know, some of these uh, governmental entities 
think that we work for them, not the other way around. That's 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 the you know, the, the biggest concern that I have. And um, and I don't know how people who are trying to make a living and cover a mortgage would have time to know what it is that I know about this stuff. Yeah. It's impossible. And so, but like I said, I'll I'll, I'll help you out for for, for free yeah. because because I you know I uh, I want to maintain my integrity as a guy who's you know trying to perform a civic duty. I'm not just doing this to make money. I'm doing it to do to to, to get it right. And the, and, the, and the reason it's important is is that homeowners, uh, for example. They don't burn police cars. They don't burn police precincts. Uh, they don't burn car dealerships. They are the foundation of this country, and they need to be defended, not treated like dirt. And unfortunately, they're treated like dirt a lot. I really love everything that you're saying, Mike. I can tell that you're passionate about it. You're telling them how passionate you are about it. I hope that some people give you a call. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. All right, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Grumble and Growl. Bye for now.